Well, good morning, church. We are glad you are joining us online this morning for our online service. There is an outline of today's message that was sent out uh, via the email. I would love to get a copy of this to you. If you did not get a copy, just let me know in the comments. Make sure you like and share the video. Also, take a moment to comment. Let us know where you're watching from. And if you have any prayer requests, something you'd like to share with us that we could pray for, we would love to pray for you. Today's a special Sunday. We're going to take a small break from our current sermon series that we're doing that I've entitled major messages from the minor prophets. We've been looking at the last 12 books of the Old Testament that are usually called the minor prophets. And we're more than, we're halfway through now. We're dealing with the last six, the next few weeks. But today we're, is our uh, Shepherd's Sunday at our 9 a.m. outdoor service that we're having this Sunday. We're going to be installing uh, Randy Renfo as one of our new shepherds, one of our elders, pastors, and overseer of this church family to serve alongside Bob and Kevin and Ernie. And I'm really looking forward to uh, Randy coming on board and working with us. So what I want to do this morning, just for a few minutes with you, I hope you had a chance to watch the live stream of our outdoor uh, service if you were not able to make it. But I just want to flesh out and I want to share a little bit deeper with the outline that was in the bulletin this morning. So if you have your Bibles, you want to open to Acts chapter 14. Acts chapter 14, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and Acts in your New Testament. And in Acts chapter 14, we have the story uh, of Paul where, where he's been uh, establishing and starting new churches throughout Asia Minor, uh, uh, throughout the places where, where God and the Spirit had sent him and had led him. And after each time he would start a church, Paul would install elders at the church. And if you look at Acts chapter 14, verse 23 is on the top of your outline. It's here on the big screen. The Bible says, And when they had appointed elders for them in every church with prayer and fasting, they committed them to the Lord in whom they had believed. So on your outline, I want you to fill in this first blank. I want you to understand that God's plan for his church is that every church is supposed to have elders. God's plan is for every church to have elders. Time and time again, when you read throughout the Bible, when a church was started, Paul uh, would make sure elders would be installed to oversee and to shepherd and to manage and to, and to spiritually care for that church. Uh, Titus chapter 1, verse 5 on your outline. The Bible says this. This is Paul talking to, to this young preacher named Titus. This is why I left you in Crete, he said, so that you might put uh, what remained in order and, look at this, appoint elders in every town, meaning in every church, just as he was directed. So God's plan has been from the beginning that for the local church is to be ran, it's to be governed, it, it's to be overseen, it's to be shepherded and pastored by a group of men that we typically refer to as elders, sometimes pastors or, or shepherds. Um, the church in a universal sense, of course, Jesus is the head. But when it comes to the local church, it's men chosen from within the church who are uh, ordained by God, who have been chosen by his Holy Spirit to oversee the church. So on your outline number two, I want to give you some blanks to fill in and talk with you just for a moment. Some of this is stuff that we have covered before. Some of this is things that I know you know, but it's good to be reminded that you know what you know. It's good to be, take a look again at what the Bible says. And especially as this Sunday we are affirming and, and uh, placing Randy in and uh, our current shepherds, Bob and Kevin and Ernie at the 9 a.m. service are also going to reaffirm their role and their commitment to you, their church family here. So the elders' responsibility to the church. The first blank letter A, fill in this. They're called to oversee. Elders are called to to literally oversee the affairs of the church. So the Bible says it this way, Acts 20, verse 28, keep watch over yourselves and all the flock of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. Be shepherds, Paul says, of the church of God 
to, uh, which he bought with his own blood. Here Paul is saying that what you're supposed to do as a church is once elders have been established, one of their tasks, one of their responsibilities, one of their jobs prescribed by the Holy Spirit is that they oversee the church. They oversee it in spiritual ways and in, in, in uh, uh, physical ways as well. Um, we, we'll talk later this year again about deacons because I've been praying really hard about some new deacons to come on board uh, with this year that we're in. And uh, the Bible says that, that that's the opportunity for the elders to focus on the ministry of prayer and the word and to give deacons oversight of buildings, but still under the oversight of God's elders. So they're overseers. Letter B, they're called to be pastors or shepherds. Pastors or shepherds. The Greek word that we usually translate as shepherd or pastor is pileman, literally someone who is a shepherd. And you know, for us today, this, this kind of this idea, this theme, this, this, this uh, uh, il- il- illustration of a shepherd caring for its sheep, it, it's lost on us a little bit. But to the readers of the New Testament during New Testament times, this would have made so much sense. Because there, even to this day, there are Bedouin shepherds in Israel. And this idea of how they care for their sheep, how they, how they live with their sheep. We, we, we shared a message a few Sundays ago about how we are blessed to have smelly shepherds here, right? Stinky shepherds because they smell like their sheep. They protect them. They care for them. So in 1 Peter chapter 5, I referenced verses 1 through 5 on your outline. I hope you take time to read them. But look at verse 2. Here, Peter says, be shepherds, talking to the elders, be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care. Watch over them. And it's not because you must, but it's because you are willing, as God wants you to be. I really like the picture of the elder as a shepherd or a pastor. I really like that. I know that in our world today, a lot of times when somebody says the word pastor, they're typically thinking about the person who is the preacher, the person who gets up each Sunday and does the sermon. But biblically speaking, the pastor are the elders, are the shepherds, are the overseers. They are the ones who are caring for the flock. Many times throughout Scripture, God describes His children as the sheep of His pasture. And with the church, the church of Jesus Christ, uh, Jesus is our great shepherd and our elders, pastor, and shepherd the church locally. I want to give you another one. Letter C, under the elders' responsibility, is for preaching and for teaching. Preaching and and teaching. When you read in Paul's description to Timothy of the qualifications, the the characteristics is, I think, a better, their spiritual characteristics more than check off mark qualifications. But when you read about them, one of the qualifications that Paul says is they are apt, they are able, they are willing to teach. The Bible teaches explicitly that that God's shepherds, God's pastors, God's elders and overseers, not only should they direct the affairs of the church well, 1 Timothy 5, 17 on your outline, look what it says, the elder who directs the affairs of the church well are worthy of double honor, but get the next part of this verse, especially those uh, whose work is preaching and teaching. I love the opportunity. I, I, I love, I, I feel called to preach. That's what I truly believe. The, the Holy Spirit has just burdened my heart with, with what to do, and that is why I am the preacher here, and, and, and I fill that role. But I love opportunities to share this pulpit with our elders, with our shepherds, like we're going to do this Sunday morning at our 9 a.m. outdoor service. Uh, the, the, the elders are each going to share a little bit of a word. Randy coming on board is going to be sharing something as well. And you know that all of our elders have and do take turns in preaching and in teaching. And that's because that is something that is expected of them. It's a responsibility of the elders, according to the scripture, that they are called to preach and to teach. That's one of the ways they're pastoring and they're shepherding. That's one of the ways they are overseeing the church because they're overseeing what's being taught, what's being preached. And then one more on your outline, the letter D, it's the elder's responsibility to pray for the church. 
the elders are called to pray for the church. Later this year, when we talk about deacons again, we're going to see that there was a time in Acts when the, the elders of the church had to get some people to take care of some of the affairs and some of the things that were taking place in the church because they needed more time to focus on the study of God's word and on prayer. And I want you to know that we are very blessed to have a group of men and with Randy joining us who really pray for this church. I mean, when prayer requests are sent our way, they are sent, whether it comes to me or it goes to Leah or it goes to Bob or it goes to Kevin or Ernie or if it would go to Randy now, as soon as that happens, those are distributed to others. And these are men who are praying for you. And anytime you want them to pray with you, I know that's something that is burdened on their heart that they would love to do. In fact, the Bible says this, the brother of Jesus, James, he says in James 5, verse 14 on your outline, it's here on the screen. He said, is any among you sick? Well, let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and to anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. I would love, and we probably will, in fact, what I, what I may do, I didn't tell the elders I was doing this, so they're going to hear this live or, or watch this later and, and find out, but it's to spend a little bit of time, uh, what does the Bible mean when it says anointing with oil, and, and why would elders be called to do something like that? So I'm going to cast that off because their responsibility is preaching and teaching, right? So we'll get them to do that. But, but if someone is sick... The Bible says you should, one of the things we should do is call on the elders that they might pray for you, that they might pray with you, that they might pray over you. And man, we are definitely living in a time where with COVID and with all the junk and the viruses, it just seems like there's a, there's a new cold or a new sickness or a new disease or a new cancer being discovered all the time. We are definitely sick. But I think there's also a spiritual side to this as well, because there are people who become spiritually sick, and the elders are called to pray over them. And then real quickly, number three, I want to talk about the church's responsibility to the elders. I mean, it is God's plan. It is God's design. The Bible plainly teaches that for every congregation, God wants elders who are chosen by the church, uh, uh, who are placed by the Holy Spirit, who, are, who feel called to want a shepherd and elder and pastor and oversee at a church. We, we saw their responsibilities uh, of oversight, their responsibility of pastoring, their responsibilities of preaching and teaching and of prayer. So I just want to share with you two verses that deal with uh, our responsibility as the church family to our elders. And this is important because Sunday morning at our 9 a.m. service, for those of you who were here, we as those of us who are here as a church family, we did affirm that we want to support these men who have chosen to take on this essential role of being pastors of this church here at Ham Lane. So the first scripture again, 1 Timothy 5, 17, the, this, this passage we already looked at once, but it says, let the elders who rule well be considered worthy of double honor. I mean, our shepherds, our pastors, our elders, they are certainly worthy of double honor. Amen. I mean, they're willing to pray with you and for you. I, I, the, 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 the troubles that people in this church are going through, it, it comes down to the elders, and, and, and they struggle, and, and they are hurting, and they are praying with you as you go through, these, through trying times because they want to help you spiritually. They want you to be the person God is calling you to be as they are striving to be the people that God are calling them to be. And they are worthy of us giving them honor and giving them respect. And then this one more passage, Hebrews 13, 17. I've shared this with you before, but it's an important passage. The Bible says that we as the church should obey our leaders and submit to them. Why? For they are keeping watch over our souls as those who will give an account. Let them do this with joy, not with groaning. For that would be of no advantage to you. 
I mean, the Bible says that our job is to make their job a joyous thing, something that, that, that we, we, we do our best to, to not burden them down, that we do our best to submit to their authority because they are ones who submit to authority. I mean, it, it, it's kind of a, it, to the, the task of preaching, the task of being an elder and overseer of, of the Lord's church. I mean, the Bible says that they are going to be held, we are going to be held at a higher accountability than others. Why? Because we're we're watching over something that is eternally important. We're, we're, not, it, we're not just dealing with, with bills or with maintenance or with uh, missionaries. I mean, we're talking about life and death, eternal life and death situations within a church family. So our elders, man, they, they need us to be a people who are submitting to them, who are obeying them, who are making their job, their work, their ministry with us a joy. That is our responsibility as a church family to our elders. I know that during my time here, I have seen the vast majority of you do that very well. And I'm so appreciative of that. I'm so appreciative of our elders. Hey, listen, if, if you didn't make it out to our 9 a.m. service, I want you to check it out. It's on Facebook. It was recorded live. You'll get a chance to see that where each one of our elders did take a moment to share a little bit with you some of the desires on their hearts and with Randy coming on board with us. But let me pray for you. Let me pray for our elders. Let me pray for our church. Father God, I ask a blessing now upon all of us, that, that especially upon your church family here at Ham Lane. Lord, I pray that we could navigate these troubled times that we find ourselves in, whether it's dealing with COVID or it's dealing with some of the civil and political unrest that we're, we're just seeing in our world today. Lord, I just ask for your peace. I just pray that, that you would speak peace into our land, into our country, into our city, and into this church. I pray, Father, that as a church here, we would be an example of you to our community. And Lord, I especially pray for our elders for those who are pastoring and overseeing us, Lord, I know that, that you have called them to the place where you have them. This is a church family who has been loving and supportive. And as Randy is coming on board, I just pray for that same love and that same support for him. Help us as a church family to make their job, their ministry with us, a joy and never a burden. These things we pray today in Jesus' name and amen. Guys, listen, I want you to know that we are seriously praying for you. If there's anything that you want to, whether you send us a, a, an email or a call or a text, or if you just want to leave something in the comments here, let us know how we can pray for you. I want you to know that your pastors, they see those as well, and they'll be praying with you, and they'll be praying for you. Uh, the praise team has another song they're going to share with us uh, this morning, so stick around, check that out, and there'll be a few announcements that you'll want to catch at the end of this. Thanks so much. God bless, and I hope to see you next Sunday.